Hey everyone, just wanted to give you an update on what's going on with the whole move. Uh, we finally got the roof completed, thank God for that. It's It's been crazy just with the weather the way it is where I live. The next step is to get the painting done. We're painting the interior of the home and well that means I'm going to have to disconnect everything and move it so they could come in and do all of the painting. We've also recently, we had to have a tree removed from the yard. Uh, oh, it looks so much better with that thing going. It, it was about half dead. Uh, it was beyond the point of saving. And once we get the painting complete, then we got to rip out the carpet from two of the bedrooms. And we're going to replace it either with a, a tile or some laminate or something. We hadn't decided, hadn't picked anything out yet. So I think that's everything. We're, I'm, I'm hoping we can get all this done in the next couple of weeks and maybe within the next month, find a house and close on it. <laughs> yeah, that's very optimistic, but hey, I'm hoping. All right, well, thank you for sticking with me through all of this process, and we will get through it. Today's story, I think you're going to enjoy. It's a symphony of emotion from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. So with all of that being said, let's begin today's story, shall we? I was born with perfect hearing, a genetic mutation that allows me to listen in on the inner rhythm our bodies provide. Until the previous generation, no one had detected the music that our bodies produced. The frequency is so strange and subtle that specialized listening devices had to be made. Surprisingly enough, when people like me first started experiencing the music of others, we were not treated as mentally ill. There was no hate campaign or BS politics. The first of us were treated with respect and it allowed science to flourish. Once it was determined that we weren't physically suffering and obviously no threat to society, we continued on as if nothing was different. Some of us hated always hearing the music. For them, a cochlear-like ear implant blocked the sound waves. Others, like me, really embraced the ability. We considered ourselves privileged. There was something about hearing the music from so many that made us feel connected to them, like mycelium under the earth, connected to each other in a way that no one else but us could understand. The music that humanity shares with us is mostly pleasant. It could be described as the definition of your personality. The music inside you is your truest form of self. Happy, healthy, and whole typically provide an upbeat soundtrack to the world around me. Lots of music in C and G major, accompanied by A and E minor. Unfortunately, there are lots of people who are born with disability, mental illness, or general malaise as well. In the key of D minor, their music is so sad often reflecting on their quality of life, it's easy to tell the nature of a person when they don't know I'm listening. I know it's kind of tasteless to always be eavesdropping, but my hearing is a natural function. I will not hinder it. In the two generations since we first heard the music, there have been all kinds all the music of the world on display for all abled beings to hear all the time. I enjoy being in public. The music never gets old. It's always new and different. I spend times in malls, grocery stores, parks, and carnivals. I enjoy walking downtown where the hustle and bustle provides an amazing jam session. People watching, takes on a whole new meaning when you're vibing to their music. I somehow feel my connection to them is more personal. Since we begin keeping track, the music has generally been the same. 
the newborn and pre-dead produced a psychedelic sound, often convoluted, a cacophony of warped emotion. That was all anyone ever heard, until the low, foreboding tones of G minor came creeping into my world. It came on softly at first, a low rhythm over a static hum, seemingly blanketing the earth around me like rolling fog. I had never felt this before, never heard this before. It was filled with agony. It was rhythmic, rife with anger, a tone that suggested vile and violent intent. I could feel myself fill with dread, the baby fine hairs on my neck standing at attention, the cold trickle of fear on my spine. This music was unlike any other. It swelled and dropped. It ran through various chord progressions. It had become a hardened, driven beat, louder, angrier, and vengeful. The sounds hit my ears like the speech of a brutal dictator. Fear seemed like the driving force behind this music. What was this? No one sounded like this. I wondered who else, if anyone, may have heard it. I wondered if anyone else was intrigued. I went looking for disaster. I followed the music this march of sorts. It was frightening and captivating. Every drum beat, every guitar chord, every bass string plucked drew me closer and closer. My brain was becoming very anxious, while my very soul was being drawn towards this powerful new sound. I searched, following the symphony of probable demise, it brought me to an abandoned prison. Dilapidated and weathered, the prison still stood. From outside the entrance, I could hear the tortured souls and cords of hundreds of people in the halls and cells over the driving beat of this mysterious new menace. Filled with trepidation, I ventured forth into this prison. I had to find the source. It drew me closer. I walked into an empty hallway, lit only by the light from the outside pouring in through the holes in the roof. The screams went silent, but the hurt increased in volume. It was uncomfortable and I hated it, but I shouldered the weight. In the distance, a red door. The only red door was pulling me, magnetized and mesmerized. I stood still, silent, scared. In that moment, I took stock of my feelings, my emotions. I was of two minds, but a singular body. I hated where I was, but only ever wanted to be right there, exactly then. I opened the door. What I assumed to be a child stood before me, androgynous and slight, hairless, pale skin that appeared blue. Blue in the way that a cadaver is blue. The child hovered over the floor, its legs crossed in the way school children's are at story time. The child's eyes looked closed, yet open, eyelids translucent over black eyes. Its lips were stretched tight across its mouth, the corners forced ever so slightly into a disgusted frown. The child seemed fraught, like it was disappointed in whatever was in its mind. I was compelled to speak, but barely made a peep. The child's eyes shot open, and all music stopped. All music had stopped. The silence was deafening, staring through me 
into my soul, I could feel its presence enter into my consciousness. It was then that I understood. The child wasn't a child. This being was the literal embodiment of hate. It spread itself like a virus, covering everything in its path with disgust, hate, anger, and rage. Homicide, suicide, and genocide was the goal, and this being was damned and determined to spread. The music resumed. It spoke to me, not in words that any human could comprehend, but in the way that imparted all of its knowledge onto me. I was the Eve to its serpent. I felt the change consume me. I hadn't been in pursuit of good or morality or love, so the hatred plunged into me like a dry syringe into the vein. The hate imparted on me all of the things that it was and left none of me. I was eradicated. I became the fear from which we run. I had become the destroyer of senses. I had become terror. I am wrath. I am jealousy. They will all feel me. They will all hear my death march. Humans and mutants alike will feel the cores of a million souls. It will be their prison. I will be exalted. No one had any idea of what I'd become. I am sin. I am despair. I am become death. I am death. They will acknowledge me. I am.